Well, it looks like the weatherman was right. Not only did it get bitter cold as expected, but it also snowed. But it is not as cold today as it was, so it's not a half bad day in the shop, especially with the little wood stove going. Today I thought we would look at the 150 mil challenge. Now, if you haven't heard about the 150 mil challenge, for that matter, I hadn't heard about it until just yesterday. This is to use a piece of 20 millimeter square bar stock, 150 millimeters long. Now that's three quarters square by six inches long for most of us and create anything you want out of this piece of bar stock. Now I saw this over on Daniel Moss's channel. If you're not familiar with Daniel, he, he does videos where he frequently uses the phrase, trust me, I'm a blacksmith. And he does some excellent videos, has a wonderful shop in England with a great big massy power hammer, really some impressive stuff to watch. I strongly encourage you to take a look at his channel. But this also isn't his idea. He was presenting a concept which comes from one of the instructors at Hereford College, which is also in England and has an excellent blacksmithing program. For, so for any of you who are interested in being a college educated blacksmith, it might be worth taking a look at that college. Dan presented his project for the 150 mil challenge. He upset the bar down, worked it round, punched a hole in it, and made a nice little forged iron ring that he then turned on a lathe at the college. The nature of the finished project is largely irrelevant. This is a chance to challenge your imagination, use what skills and what tools you have, the only rules that I am aware of that it has to be a piece of 20 mil square, 150 mil long bar, hence the name 150 mil challenge, or three quarter by three quarter by six inch long bar for those of us in the US, and that everything has to come from this one bar. That means you can cut it as many times as you want, you can reassemble it into any form you want, you can forge it into the shape you want, you can mill it, you can drill it, you can put it on a lathe, you can grind it, you can weld it back together, whatever you want to do, as long as you add no new material to the bar. Which means if you need a rivet, you have to make the rivet out of this bar. If you want to weld it back together, you have to make the filler rod for your weld out of this bar. In conjunction with the 150 mil challenge, there's a hashtag 150 mil challenge and that's on Instagram. So if you're looking for pictures of what people have done for this challenge, you need to go to Instagram. You need to look up the 150 mil challenge. I will link to that hashtag down below and hopefully that will take you to Instagram and you can look even if you don't have an Instagram account. But anyways, what do I want to do for the challenge? Now this is very similar to the blacksmith challenge that I have presented before that was half inch by half inch by three inches long and you can make anything you wanted out of that one bar. Same idea, but a much bigger bar, much more dramatic possibilities. Now I am thinking wing compass or wing dividers. Same tool regardless of what name you give it, just depends on what you want to call it. I have lots of different versions, some are antiques. This particular pair that I really like were made by Peter Ross and is spectacular but probably a bit larger than we can get out of this one bar. Just to check my ambition here and make sure that I'm not biting off more than I can chew, I got a scale out and I'm going to weigh this piece of bar. And this piece of bar is 15.7 ounces. So I'm not going to get a project that weighs over a pound out of this no matter how hard I try. For that matter, there's going to be loss to forge scaling, trimming, filing, grinding. We're probably looking at something more in the 10 to 12 ounce range by the time we're all done with it safely. Now this pair of Peter Ross dividers that I like so much are 14.4 ounces. So this is probably way too big a pair of dividers or compass. Peter always calls these a compass because historically they were referred to as compasses, compasses, but most of us today refer to it as a divider. Now this very small antique pair that I have only weighs in at six ounces. So somewhere between here and here, we should be able to achieve this project. I have a mid-sized pair here that's 9.7 ounces. So I think that's a very realistic size goal. I'm not going to worry about copying a style exactly. We're just going to kind of see where this takes us. A lot of these have a triangular leg and I don't think I have a triangular swedge to work that in. So instead of making the triangular leg, we'll probably leave the leg square or rectangular, but we'll see when we get to that point. 100% of this project has to come out of this bar. Now this is the bigger pair from Peter Ross. This is more the size that we'll end up with. But that means the thumb screw has to be made out of this bar. The rivet that it pivots on has to be made out of this bar. 
the wing or the arm that guides it has to be made out of that one bar, and the pin that holds that bar in has to be made out of that, as well as the two legs. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six pieces we have to make out of this bar. Now to keep the video at a reasonable length, I don't think there's any chance that we're going to finish this project in one video. I don't think I'll get it done in two videos. Three is more realistic. Four is a possibility. So today what I want to do is start isolating the mass for all of these pieces. We'll forge a piece for the wing nut first and get it isolated and separated. Maybe finish the wing nut, I'm not sure. Then we'll draw out enough bar for the rivet and for the little pin that holds the wing in. Then we'll see how much material we have left, figure out what we'll need for the wing, and then we can cut it in half and make both legs out of the two resulting halves. So I think today we might only get the wing nut done and the stock reduced down for the pins and the rivets, things like that, but we'll see how far we get. Now because this challenge is about what can you do with this single piece of three quarter by three quarter by six inch bar, and isn't a challenge about what tools you can use to work with this bar, I'm going to allow myself to use any tool in the shop that I feel is appropriate. And we'll just play that by ear as we get to the different steps. To start with, I want to draw out enough to make the rivet, the little pin, and the thumb screw out of. And as I do that, think about what we're starting with. We're starting with three quarter inch square. A quarter inch rivet is probably plenty for a pair of dividers, and a pin probably only needs to be three sixteenths or an eight or even an eighth inch diameter. The thumb screw, I think a quarter inch diameter would be good. So if I draw out the end of this to quarter inch round, how much material do I need to, to draw out? Well, in a three quarter square bar, there are nine quarter inch segments in there. So whatever I draw out to square, theoretically I'm going to be nine times longer than what I start with. So if I start with a half inch of material, that's going to be about four and a half inches of quarter inch square bar. If I round that up, it'll be closer to five inches of quarter inch round bar. Probably not exactly, because I probably won't get it perfect, and there'll be some loss to scale, and the end will need to be trimmed, and all that kind of stuff. But I think if my initial bite of material is any more than a half an inch, I'm just wasting material. So that's what I'm going to start with. Now as this bar heats up, I'm thinking about my plan a little bit, and I'm going to modify it just a little. I'm still going to take a half inch off the end of the bar to make all these parts. I still want to start with a half inch off the end of the bar. I need to make enough for the head of the thumb screw. So I'm going to start by just taking a half inch long, reduce it to a half inch round bar. That should give me a little bit more than an inch of material. I will then take another half inch and draw that out to the quarter inch round and hopefully have enough for the pin, the rivet, the threads of the wing nut, and then that half inch round section will be the head of the wing nut, and that should leave me with five and a half inches of untouched three quarter inch square bar. I hope that all makes sense. Keep watching, it ought to make sense when we're all done. So I'm gonna just eyeball the half inch that I want here, and step down not quite to a half inch square bar in the middle, so that's less than an eighth of an inch, just enough to create a shoulder that I can find. I'm going to take the corners off to octagon so it's kind of easier to round once I'm done. And that should be all that I need to make a pin, a rivet, and a thumb screw.
So all of this came out of a half inch or roughly 13 millimeters of the three quarter inch or 20 millimeter square bar. What we end up with is about a 3 16 pin that will hold the wing in, way more material than we need. I've got plenty of material here in quarter inch round bar, in fact it will need to be filed down a little bit to make it exactly quarter inch to make the rivet that will hold it together and plenty of material to make the wing nut. This will be the threaded part of the wing nut and this half inch round bar up here will then be turned into the thumb screw, or excuse me, not wing nut, thumb screw. And this will be the thumb, thumb portion of the thumb screw. So the next thing I want to do is I want to cut all this stuff off and I think I will cut it off and leave it intact for now. And by doing it this way those three parts stay attached where they'll be easier to find and deal with, plus easier to work on. Like I say, some of this is going to need filing and if it's all attached it's just a bigger piece to file and then we'll worry about cutting them into individual components as we need to. So there's three pieces done, and this is what we have left to do the next, the next three pieces. So the next thing I want to do is actually work on the material that will be the wing and make sure I've got that taken care of before I start forging the two legs of the divider. Now the wing in this old pair is about eighth inch thick, half inch wide, and about four and a half inches long. Now again, think about how much material is in a three quarter inch square bar. That's six eighths of an inch by three quarters of an inch. So it will grow at least six times. By the time you reduce it down to a half inch wide, that's more like nine times its length as it grows. So if I need four and a half inches, I only need to start with a half inch of bar again. Now, now I didn't plan that both of these would only need a half inch of bar. That's just the way my math is coming out. So if we take another half inch bite by butchering in with the guillotine tool, we should be able to get four and a half inches of eighth inch thick by half inch wide flat bar out of that. Now we can make it a little bit narrower, we can make it a little bit thinner, we can make it a little bit longer. None of this stuff is set in stone. Really if that wing was a little bit shorter it would be perfectly functional. These open up way more than they need to. So that should be plenty of material and when we're all done we should still have five inches of our original bar left. And I think for this I'm going to go back to the power hammer because it really made that last step so much easier and so much more controlled. Saves me a lot of time in the shop and saves you a lot of video watching, but yes, you can do every bit of this at the anvil if that's all you have. So same thing again, I want to take about a half an inch and I'm just going to eyeball that. But this one, because it's going to be a flat bar, I'm going to butcher in a lot further on the two flat sides and only just a little bit, just enough to define my starting point on the edges. And I'm going to leave that a little bit thick, I'm not going to hurt anything, that just gives me some place I can work to right there.
Now what we end up with here is a piece that is an eighth inch thick, just what we wanted. Just a hair under a half inch wide, but plenty acceptable. And we are about five and a half inches long. So that's what, roughly three mil thick, 13 mil wide, or 12 mil wide maybe, and 125-ish mils long. Something like that. Don't quote me on it though. So now I want to go ahead and cut that off. And that should leave us with five inches of our original bar. So I'll just clean up this cut end a little bit. Just bring that parallel with everything else. So that's all we need to do to that. That's just preparing the stock that we want. And that now leaves us to make two legs out of this. We've done a pin, a rivet, a thumb screw, and the wing, or at least we have the materials set aside for those parts. So now I want to forge this into a rough shape that I think will make the nice legs. Now I've watched Peter Ross make compasses quite often. It's something he has demonstrated at the Rocky Mountain Blacksmithing Conference, and he has a great video on the subject. If you want to see how Peter Ross makes a simple friction compass, it's not a wing compass like this, but he has a video through Popular Woodworking Magazine, and I will try to put a link down below to that video where you can find that, and I think it's either available as DVD or a digital download. So if you want to watch somebody that really knows what they're doing make a set of compasses, I'd watch that video. I mention that because Peter typically folds and forge welds the bar to get the two leaf section. And I have done that before and it really is a pretty simple way to go. But this bar is so heavy that I don't think I really need to. I don't need to create the mass. I actually need to thin this out a lot, draw it out quite a bit to be able to make what I want. So I think I'm going to reduce this to half by one inch bar. I think the three quarter bar will spread to about an inch as I thin it to a half inch. We'll see what really comes out. And that way I'll have a half by one inch section that I can make the head of the dividers out of. Then we'll either have to slot punch or saw out the part that will be the, the two leaf portion of the three leaf divider head. Again, this will all make more sense as we do it. And maybe at the end of this video, I'll show you a little bit more about some of these other dividers. But I also know Peter does his wing dividers a little bit differently. And I think he does punch that out. So we're gonna try something like that and just see how it goes. But again, I think I'm gonna to go to the power hammer. I'm gonna make this into as close as a half by one bar as I can. Then we will isolate each end to make the head, at which point I can then cut it in half and have one section for each leg.
Now here are two legs and the heads of the dividers. You'll notice that I get one of them ended up just what I wanted, which is about an inch round. The other one ended up too small. It's about three quarters. Got a little carried away, but that's actually okay. When we prepare these to assemble, this one will get bigger and we'll explain all that hopefully in the next video on the subject. I forged this down to about a half inch square bar, 13 mil square, which is way oversized still, but it's a good place to start. And then I can cut it in half and work it in two separate halves. We're a little bit over 11 inches there, not quite a foot long. So this is gonna be a pretty good sized pair of dividers. I'm pretty impressed with what we're getting out of this piece of bar. So that's the next step is gonna to be to mark this, cut it in half, and then draw these out and get them ready to be divider legs. I think we will pick that up in the next video on the subject. Today we got all of the material roughed out. We know how much material we have for each of the six components that we need for our pair of dividers. We have one bar that'll need to be cut in half to make the two legs, and I think we're gonna end up with a very nice big set of dividers out of this. It may be bigger than I had anticipated. We have a small piece of flat stock for a wing, and we still have the thumb screw attached to the rivet attached to the pin that will hold the wing in. And I will cut all these things off and get them prepped and ready to turn into their final components for the next video. That'll just be cutting and a little filing to make sure the pins and the rivets are perfectly round. But we'll actually forge the thumb screw as part of the next video so you get to see that. And we'll forge the wing into shape so you can see that. Now I talked about this having three leaves and let me show you what I mean by that. The head of the divider has to be some form of a joint. If you look at this closely, you can see there's two on the outside, so there's a pair, and one on the inside that go together like this, and that's what makes the, the divider head work so smoothly. So this is three leaves, one on the right side, one in the middle, one on the left side. But this is just the way, way these are typically done. The three leaf is quite common. You can even do it with two offset, it kind of like tong reins, and you don't even have to worry about trying to get the leaves in. But I think this makes for a nicer tool. This ended up being much more power hammer intensive than I really intended for it to be, but it made it go a lot smoother and a lot easier for me in the shop today. And that allowed us to get all of these parts roughed out. Whereas if I'd done it all by hand, we probably would not have gotten it all done in today's video because the sun is starting to set and it's getting a little bit later. And I just don't think I would have had time today. But if you take your time, you can certainly make a pair of dividers this way all by hand at the anvil. And if you're not doing it as part of this 150 mil challenge, you don't have to draw out all these little parts. You can start with a piece of eighth inch round bar for the pin and a piece of quarter inch round bar for the rivet and a piece of quarter by half or something like that to make the thumb screw out of and your life will be a lot easier. And of course, a piece of eighth by half to make the wing out of. You don't have to forge them all out of one bar unless you're doing the 150 mil challenge, in which case every single part of the project has to come out of one piece of 20 mil by 20 mil by 150 mil square bar. I wanted to thank Daniel Moss for introducing me to the 150 mil challenge. I think it's a great project. I think it's something everybody ought to participate in. You don't have to make dividers. You can make anything you want as long as it's out of that one piece of bar. But remember, if you do make something and you have an Instagram account, share it on Instagram at hashtag 150 mil challenge. Again, I'll put that hashtag down in the description to make sure that we all get it just right, just in case there's more to it than just 150 mil challenge. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop challenge yourself, do the 150 mil challenge, or do my blacksmith's challenge out of half by half by three inch bar, or just make whatever it is you need to make in the shop. In any case, do it safely, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.